So for those that want to come to Celebration, this is the reality of the event. You'll spend a lot of it doing this. Especially if you're disabled and it's not easy for you to move about. You will be stuck behind people that either don't move or can't move. Now these we haven't seen since we were last at uh, Disney World. They were in uh, Hollywood Studios, if I remember rightly. We go to Keystone Clothiers, I'm sure they had them in there. But there's a whole range to buy, which can be dangerous, because once you bought one, you end up wanting to buy them all. But look at that little face there. Oh, he's lovely. Probably throw me over the building, but yeah, he's still lovely. And of course, have you got a cute character? Yeah, you've got some merchandising. Yeah, sure. Okay, this is uh, Hasbro's FX Elite lightsaber for Ray. You see, it has a really cool progressive light up blade. It has some great features built in, in addition to like the strike and flashing. If you do short presses on this button here, you can see it's like you're deflecting blaster shots. Yeah, cool. And if you press and hold, you can actually cut through. No, pretend to cut through most awesome. services. <laughs> One of them is a little bit different depending on the character and the, uh, the function of the actual lightsaber. Yeah. I, I was going to say, out. you can um, take the blade out. Is it look like the Galaxy's Edge ones, just like twist and uh, clip It's more? a little bit different. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a different manufacturer. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they're similar in that you can remove them. Oh, cool. Yeah. Right, excellent. Thank you very much. sound and movement combinations that respond to ambient noise so talking clapping oh wow. he's also push button activated um you got head movement body movement uh his front arm swings out uh his other arm is also poseable at the elbow and the shoulder and then uh if you lead him close enough you can hear him and he will fully sass you as the chopper would be all known about. <laughs> uh but we just revealed him yesterday oh and, wow uh, he goes up for pre-order on tuesday uh if you guys are interested qr code there 
Um, instead of scanning it because you can't really get reception, I would take a picture of it and then. Uh, Let's go it. say I'm, I'm vlogging, so is it alright if I just. Oh, yeah, you're yeah, yeah, sure. And then, uh, yeah, you'll go up for pre order, punch your email in, um, and then you'll get a notification letting you know he's available for pre order at uh, $79.99 US. That's brilliant. Yeah. Excellent. Thanks a lot for that. That's the way. <laughs> so we've uh, just done another panel. We've just done uh, the creature workshop panel absolutely amazing finding out what goes into creating uh, characters that we see on the Star Wars screen absolutely amazing for every one character you see there's probably about three or four people helping operate it dress it manage it look after it whilst it's there absolutely amazing so that's just one person so imagine what it's like in a scene with about 40 50 different characters on there absolutely fantastic very very interesting if you ever get a panel like that at a future celebration i do recommend you go and see it it did help actually we had a, a surprise appearance by ian mcdermott the emperor himself which is absolutely amazing but yeah really good anyway so we're going to head down onto the shop floor if you can see behind me Thank you very much. Okay, it's now day three. 
we're heading into another panel for the villains of the sequel trilogy so everything from the force awakens onwards so we're expecting to see ian mcdermid uh gwendolyn christie andy circus uh and let's see what surprises and recollections they've got of their time in the movies so yeah as you can expect day three it's still very busy crazy mad rush to get in but we're getting there okay so we're in the main queue now for the villains panel this morning like i said it's going to be the sequel trilogy so we're expecting a a few good talks here there's obviously plenty of people turned up for it if you can just see the queue above my head uh, they're the people that have had to go in for the lottery to get into the panel imagine there's like 100,000 people here and there's only capacity for four and a half thousand people in the actual auditorium they are going to be streaming the the panel to another two stages with another four and a half thousand people in each of those so they get to see it but not live on stage like we're going to doubt once again we'll be able to film anything in there we'll try if we can but highly doubt we can because they do have a lot of disclaimers on there and there are lucasfilm executives walking about making sure that people aren't filming because if you get caught you're out and you did you don't get back in so obviously we've got to avoid the rules anyway after that we shall hopefully meet up with some friends i've got a little friend of mine who's actually here this weekend she's been cosplaying i'll show you a picture on the vlog of hers uh, cosplay this weekend but yeah she's a friend of mine i've known for many years from uh, the set of game of thrones so yeah we'll see where the day takes us after that Well, we've just come out of the panel for the villains of the sequel trilogy and as we expected it was really really entertaining here are stories from Gwendolyn Christie and the circus and the, the great Ian McDermott as well absolutely enthralling some fantastic perspectives on the performances the things they had to go through things about motion capture about prosthetic wearing uh, the changes that uh, Phasma's armour uh, put upon her performance, uh, how they interpreted what evil was, what goes into it, and the perception of the development of evil as well. It was very, very interesting, very, very thought, thought-provoking. Uh, it's very well received by the audience that was there, not just in the celebration stage, but also in the galaxy stage, because it was streamed live to there as well. But yeah, absolutely fantastic. And also, we had a bit of a magic moment before the uh, the people that were on stage before the uh, panel started. They managed to get everyone that had a lightsaber onto stage. There's a couple hundred people on stage, all with lightsabers lit at the same time. He managed to do a Mexican wave. Uh, I caught that hopefully for the vlog don't know if i'll be able to use it because there is a bit of a uh, copyrighted music over the top but i'll see what i can do it may get the vlog pulled down so i might have to re-edit it but we'll see but uh we've got a panel a little later hopefully going to try and get into disney parks panel later uh, the obi-wan panel was a lottery ticket which we didn't get i don't think we'll be able to get in there but we'll see if we can but i severely doubt we'll be able to get in because that is a that is a hot ticket but we'll definitely have another look around the show floor see if we can get some more cosplayers um briefly met up with my friend jess um and we said we'll try and catch up later but it's a very busy event yet again not as busy as the previous two days it's been quite a lot of people going backwards and forwards but yeah it, it, we'll see if we get to meet up and have a chat um, i'll definitely put a picture of her in her cosplay yes. up on the uh, on the blog but uh yeah hopefully we'll get a few words with jess a little later but for now we're just having a bit of a pit stop hi i'm <laughs> Hello everyone, uh, remember I mentioned about my friend Jess? Well, this is Jess. 
Hello. Well, Jess and I have known each other for many, many years. Uh, we met through Game of Thrones, wasn't it? Many, yep. many moons ago. Many moons. Um, but yeah, so you may have seen Jess on Game of Thrones. Well, you, with the costumes and everything, you probably don't recognise Jess, but uh, she was a wildling in Game of Thrones. You were in, um, uh, what's the Superman, what, Krypton? Krypton, Krypton yeah. yeah. So she's been in, in many things, but uh, she's also very good at cosplaying as well. She, I've shown a picture of her in her Andor prisoner costume, uh, which she's wearing now. Um, out of shot, you can't see the, the rubber ring for the swimming that she needs to do with that roll. There you go. But uh, I'll pop in another picture that she sent me of a previous celebration, because this isn't your first celebration, is oh, it? Oh, no. I think it's my fifth. Fifth. So it's I obviously not, not just the UK you've, two, you've done them. I did two Anaheims, two Londons, and Chicago. Wow. So, yeah, this is number five. So for those of you that don't know, Celebration just isn't in London, it's in, um, it's in America, it's been in Germany, I think it's been in Japan as well. So next year they're actually taking a year off, so who knows where it'll be, you'll probably be, I would imagine, in Orlando next year, which might work in our favour because we might be able to give some Disney parks and <laughs> Celebration as well, but who knows, it's, that's yet to be decided. All depends uh, how, how long the money lasts yeah. from, the one that, uh, from the money they make this time. So. Anyway, well, one thing I wanted to know is, uh, through the times you spent on Game of Thrones and various other roles that you've done, you're always obviously wearing costumes. Yes. Has that helped you with your cosplaying? Kind of, although I was cosplaying before I did the extras work. Yeah. Um, but I think it, it gives you a sense sometimes for what not to do for something you want to be in all day at a convention that is accessible yeah. because a lot of those things you couldn't get out of easily for the day and trips to the bathroom <laughs> were, were rather awkward and so I learned through claws playing and, and through the extras is make it comfortable and make it utilitarian as much as possible and if you can't have someone with you to help and one of the good things you get through cosplaying is a good community aspect so you've been cosplaying with several people because remember um, your Ramirez cos uh, cosplay Vasquez. Vasquez sorry sorry um, yeah um, and through that you obviously got to meet Jeanette Goldstein I as did. well yeah she's amazing and Mark Ralston who will not stop talking ever he's so excitable <laughs> and he just loves talking to people it's so fun well, that's something you do get through cosplay because they add that connection through the character and you get to meet some of the uh, actors and actresses that play the characters. They're just really nice, really good people yeah. to chat to. But uh, can you talk to that costume? Because that has got to be one of your more difficult cosplays because didn't you have the gun as well? That was actually made by a friend of mine Yeah. who made the actual smart gun mm. and then I had to get a rig for it. Yeah. So... But because the gun weighed about three kilos, it was absolutely nothing. So it wouldn't even hold down a DSLR ring. Oh, wow. So we had to, I kind of had some help fiddling about with it um, to get it connected right. And we had to take out all the springs <laughs> because it was just so, so light. But Vasquez has the big chest piece yeah. that sits. So you can't just have a photographer's ring, mm. which is what they use. Um, and I'm kind of small for all of the normal chest plates and all that. So I got um, foam. Yeah. And made that sucker out of foam. Wow. To do the chest plate and painted it and did the designs on it. So what's been your most intricate or difficult cosplay to actually do? With help, probably my Arkham City Harley Quinn. Yeah. Um, I looked at that and cried. Mm. And I had a lot of help from a very good friend who did yeah. most of it. But that was probably, with all the detailing work, getting in and out of it was the hardest. Yeah. Absolutely was the hardest. For me, it was my roller derby Harley Quinn. Yeah. Um, I do not recommend sewing six layers of lycra and elastic <laughs> ever. So I had to piece together different patterns and get everything right and get it to look right. Wow. And custom made my knee pads, my shoulder pads, my custom painted the helmet mm. to do the pigtails. Yeah. Um, I just drilled holes in the helmet 
and put hair extensions. <laughs> so I could tuck all my hair up under there and painting roller skates. Wow. That probably took me the most fiddly amount of time. So quite the opposite to the 11 cosplay that you did. Very right? opposite to 11. <laughs> um, yeah, that was that was a kind of a, a mix and match for purchase. Yeah. Find a pair of Converse, find a pair of knee-high socks. Yeah. Um, people were making the dress. And you even shaved your head as well? I did shave my head and I got my box of Eggos. Thank you to my sister for sending me the Eggo box. <laughs> she did demand that she had the waffles. <laughs> and that was fine because they're frozen. That's fine. <laughs> Extra crunch. <laughs> yeah. They would have been soggy and gross by the time they got here from Colorado. <laughs> So, what has been a, a, a standout cosplay or type of cosplay that you've seen at Celebration this weekend? My favorite ones have to be the various troopers. Yeah. There's a, a Roman centurion, mm. stormtrooper. Cool. And that's cool. that's just amazing. And then you watch the, the uh, one of the. I, Amadala type big dresses with the globes at the bottom light up. <laughs> yes. So anybody who's put that kind of fun little detail. Yeah. But I, w- I always love the fun stormtroopers. I think there's an Elsa stormtrooper. Yeah. And an Olaf. I've seen a Joker stormtrooper. I've yeah, no, one there's an Elsa well. and an Olaf stormtrooper. Wow. <laughs> so then those are just funny. Well, that's the type of thing that you've got to expect here at Celebration. But Absolutely. You just see so many amazing things. It's very hard to actually capture it on the blog, partially with the queue and the amount of people here. But it's just getting these people to stand still for five minutes because they are so in demand with such awesome costumes. It's hard to capture them with anything other than your eye. So if you ever come to Celebration, get ready to see some awesome costumes Absolutely. and you'll see some awesome people like my mate Jess so thanks very much for joining You're us thanks for having me and we'll carry on with the convention absolutely just a casual walking walking past So we're back at the Hasbro stand and they've got an Indiana Jones range that they brought out. Uh, Robert John Reese Davis there, Salah. Okay, so we're now at one of the art stands. This is the artwork of Jason Palmer, and I've got to say, it's some of the best artwork I've seen in a long, long time. I've been doing conventions for over 40 years, and this is amongst the best I've seen ever. See, amazing art. Some nice. Send the Jedi piece there. Of course, the. So here go Luna's and all sold out. We've gone to the back wall of some amazing pieces that Jason's created. Spanning the full width of the Star Wars saga. If you want to find out more, you can check out his website. Hopefully you can pick up the QR code there. Oh, 
I only saw the first three. I know, right. So the fourth one also does it too. You're the fourth one. The fifth one turns his sounds on and off. Okay, so let's not. Yep. And the sixth one, which again, the sixth one, if you click that. It's a proximity sensor, so as you get close to the screen. Alright, I'll well, that's it. I'll see you sometimes hand out of the drop, but you surely don't want to do that. Everyone. Yeah, I've got one. Awesome, thank you very much. Well, we've skipped on from when you last saw us. We were actually at the event last time, uh, recorded anything, but we went back into the main show floor and we basically realized we'd seen as much as we're gonna see. Uh, we'd seen all the panels that we, um, uh, we applied for. We did as much as we could uh, physically and mentally, but there's only so much you can do. And uh, one regret I do take away is actually not filming as much, uh, much more than I could actually. But one of the downfalls of when you're vlogging things, if you film everything that is there, then you don't really get to take part in everything that is there. You miss out on a lot. So it's good to see things through your eyes, not through the lens on the camera. Uh, so my advice would, uh, for if you're going to celebration is to see as much as you can talk to as many people there's lots of friendly people there uh, there's friends you've not met yet that will be there there's some really interesting panels to take part in lots of celebrities to meet lots of autographs to get uh, especially if you've got the money for it but i'll come on to that uh, shortly uh, lots of things to photograph lots of things to do lots of things to eat lots of things to drink an amazing amount of things you could do the, over the course of uh, four days but we decided we'd done as much as we physically could so we actually left a little early came back a, a day early it's still going on at this moment but uh, looking at the time and yeah they're probably just about shut now so we decided to raid the bank holiday traffic and come home a day, a day early and we, we got home and now it's time for me to digest everything that we've done so over the course of the weekend we saw several panels uh really enjoyed the villains of the sequel trilogy panel uh, sp uh got to hear from ian mcdermid uh andy circus uh yeah it's absolutely fantastic um Gwendolyn christie was also the really good insights into their performances what what they uh used to help them perform under a lot of prosthetics or from motion capture or through masks uh it was very interesting to hear we also saw the creature workshop or the creature cantina i should say uh that was amazing to find out the uh the effort that goes into getting these aliens these monsters these giants these robots getting them on screen what is involved is absolutely amazing if there's ever a a panel like that again a celebration i can highly recommend going to see it brian herring was brilliant uh, in his presentation uh, we also saw um the panels for the ahsoka uh so but I'll, I'll recap all the news that we got over the weekend so um there's going to be some new films coming um i'll let lucasfilm release all the information for that by the time you see this it'll probably be all out on the internet anyway but there's going to be new films coming uh new ideas new story angles coming ray is returning to the star wars universal so daisy ridley is back as ray uh dave filoni is actually going to be filming one of those uh films uh i believe to wrap up the mando universe so it's not all going to be about mandalorians no matter how popular they are they are one part of a massive universe so they're going to close down that story bad batch is being um renewed for a, another season but a final season so that story will be wrapping up um we also got to see the andor panel which was very interesting meeting all the uh the people that got involved with that uh, including daigle luna uh, Tony V, director, absolutely brilliant panel that was. Kathleen Kennedy was at that 
that panel as well. And they're talking about the next season. Obviously, they couldn't give us any spoilers or anything like that. But we do know that they are taking 20 characters. And that's a lot. 20 characters from the first season into the second season. So it gives you an idea of how much story depth there is there. Uh, we also saw the Ahsoka panel. Um, we got to meet all the characters. So with that story, they're actually uh, blending the, uh, the animated series, bringing them to life. Uh, some of the characters, I'm blending that in with Ahsoka. So we got to meet there, Sabine Wren, um, Chopper, the robot was there, absolutely brilliant, full of attitude, as you would expect for the character Chopper. Um, we also met Hera as well, and uh, the actual spaceship ghost is going to be there, which uh, got a massive uh, round of applause from the audience. Uh, you obviously got to meet um, Ahsoka Tano herself, and you also met, got to meet two new baddies as they called them um but once again if you look at the trailers and you look at the lucasfilm releases that are on youtube probably as we speak you'll find out all about them um but the big reveal which created a massive cheer from the audience was they finally confirmed that lars mickelson is back as admiral Thrawn. that blew the roof off the off the building that was an amazing reveal we sort of all knew that had happened but now it's been officially confirmed everyone went ballistic about it it was really good to be in the panel at the time uh, we also went to the disney parks panel and we found out there's going to be some new destinations for uh, star tours and they obviously they couldn't reveal those destinations because the key thing is they're going to be in the new releases that are still to come from Lucasfilm. So there's going to be some surprises. They said that they're going to be in 2024, but as Disney's Disney, they don't actually give you a set date. Uh, I would imagine that they're probably going to tie them in around the um, uh, May the 4th, obviously because it's a Star Wars day. It'd be a good uh, little time to release the information there if they're not already in the parks at that time. Uh, but yeah, there's going to be new stuff. Uh, to do on, on that particular ride and there's also going to be some new music so anyone that's been to Ogre's Cantina and listened to the sounds of DJ Rex there was a album released with all his tunes well there's going to be a second volume it should be released now uh, so even now as you see this video it should be available for you to download and they're also going to release uh, some um, some of the tunes from Gaia. Now, if you don't know who Gaia is, then look at any of the videos that are on YouTube. There's lots of them uh, relating to the Galactic Star Cruiser. She is the Galactic Diva in a diva in a, in a nice way, uh, who performs on the on the Star Wars uh, Galactic Cruiser, the Halcyon. Anyway, they're going to release an album of her tunes. And to celebrate this uh, this announcement, they actually gave us some artwork. And there's going to be a tune, if you bear with me, I'll just get the, the poster. We got we got a poster of the uh, the album artwork. And look at this. Probably backwards, but oh well. I'll try and flip the image. But yeah, this is actually a brilliant bit of, of printed artwork. Collector's poster. Uh, I know it's a, a good piece of artwork and it's a, a nice collector's piece because we're already all over eBay uh, going for lots of money. But yeah, we managed to get one. I'm very happy with that. Uh, the design was done by uh, or with the involvement of the gen that did the album covers for the likes of Led Zeppelin and Jimi Hendrix. Uh, so yeah, it's been a fantastic weekend. We met uh, lots of old friends. We met lots of new ones. Um, let's think, who did we meet? Let's try to remember names now. Um, oh, I met uh, Danny, uh, met a good friend of mine, Jess, who probably saw the interview on the on the uh, vlog with her. Uh, Jenny, uh, Robin, um, Tony, um, oh, Gil. Uh, Gil and his son come all the way from Israel. Uh, lovely to meet you guys, and well done to his son, because he actually went up, I oh, got called up on stage, won the quizzes in the Disney Parks panel and he managed to win that so very well done to you that was amazing um also yeah we uh, went shopping at a, a place called Results where I get a lot of my as you as you know anyone who watches me regularly I like to wear 
nice interesting button down shirt so um i get them from i'm not affiliated with i'm not getting sponsored or anything but yeah so i got them from results they had a stand there and i made a purchase as you would imagine but i also met nathan from uh some of you know him as paging mr morrow um probably put a link to his uh disney vlogs down below uh, but yeah he's a lovely guy we've got chatting about disney vlogging uh the parks uh, he's on his way to paris so we gave him a few hints on how to get around in paris and we started yeah chatting about the differences of the park he's a really really lovely guy so check out his vlogs as well uh but one of the best things about celebration is the camaraderie amongst those people i've, I've obviously shown you lots of uh, or as many pictures as i can of uh the uh the cosplayers the uh, i could not capture every cosplay because there were thousands of them all varying quality or various sizes or various species uh or varying types of either mandalorians or stormtroopers i lost count of the amount of male princess layers i saw the amount of hair buns was amazing you're all fantastic you're all brilliant i'm just sorry i couldn't capture you all but i've got a selection if i've used anyone's pictures i've tried to find out who who took the picture and that's sufficient but if i've missed anyone please let me know and i will gladly credit you um on the vlog i don't want to seek any financial rec recompense for any of this i just want to share my fun experience with you but sharing is one of the key words with this event because people love to share things uh the word swag is used a lot and for those that don't know swag essentially is the fans giving presents with no expectation of getting anything returned they they make things they they dish them out i myself made a lot of badges and handed them all out didn't want anything in return but happy to give people and lots of people were very happy saying oh i actually collect badges so he just added to their collection it was just a friendship gesture for the weekend and boy did we get a lot of friendship we got here we go uh we got wookie placemats wookie stickers oh grogu stickers you know in fact i'll show you these a bit up close if you can focus in on them yeah and these are all made by people it's not like purchase these are actually made by people they've done their own artwork and printed them out as stickers absolutely fantastic a little sticker there that's fantastic here we go a uh, sticker from the uh, one of the the clone trooper detachment of the 501st got that another little sticker there feel the force felt it this weekend some more stickers there stickers are a good one people actually make badges as well oh this, this was a good one nice little shiny boca tangeries there but people uh oh one more sticker look at that one I mean, nice and shiny i don't know the light doesn't really do it justice there but they do glisten in the light when you when you catch it right but yeah people actually make badges as well i'd like to say i made a lot of badges when i so there's a, a nice hunter from the bad batch there's a little crossover mandalorian and viking theme really like that um we've got actually some people make collector cards so there's one there's a bo -Katan crease and she was actually in costume there that weekend and that is her in costume so look how look at the quality effort that goes into making these costumes sorry about the reflection on it so let's try that but yeah that's a young lady i'll put she's got a little barcode on there she's got a founder and first id number so sorry it's a little qr code there there's t uh yeah well done costume cosplay was all stream that the t Here's another one. She's got a character, Iden Versio. And this is uh, another one. Uh, but yeah, D. Udding. Oh, sorry, Anna Udding. 
But yeah, so there's another one that found her first and she's got her, her details on there. Feel free to check her out and tell her how fantastic her cosplay is. Absolutely brilliant. Really nice people. Lovely to chat to. And this is one of my favourite things that we got. Obviously, nothing branded, all handmade. But these are poker chips. Star Wars Celebration branded on the back. And some fantastic pictures on the front. Absolutely brilliant. Like I say, everything given away free with no expectation of anything returned, just done out of friendship. And that's one of the biggest and best things to take from Celebration. The amount of friendship that was there was just unbelievable. But it's not all good things with Celebration. Obviously, with great events, there are good points and then there are bad points. And obviously, one of the points that a lot of people raised was the price. It was expensive. Um, it was over £300, uh, I remember, from vague adult memory. Uh, for um, Fizzgig and myself for a four day pass which we didn't end up using all four days because we'd done everything it was smaller than previous celebrations from memory uh, but yeah the price of things has gone up a lot including autograph prices um, fearing saying things like i remember the days but yeah it used to be about 20 maybe even 30 pounds for a top level autograph where now it's over 200 pounds or thereabouts so 140 pounds for some 109 pounds for other there's a lot of money and um i know i i suspect and i've heard on good authority that not all that money goes to the celebrities so they're obviously it's a business they need to make money uh but boy were they making money this weekend or oh, that was the impression obviously i don't know the the dealings of the financials or anything like that but it they did seem to be making a lot of money and yeah as many people that were saying it was too expensive they couldn't afford it there were more than enough people paying that price so my suggestion if you're ever going to uh, celebration do it if it's not going to financially inconvenience you if you can't afford autographs don't buy them don't put yourself in any debt to do all these things there are countless conventions going on i mean the uk alone every weekend there is a convention somewhere of some size support the smaller independent ones if you want I met my good friend uh, Sean Harry that he runs Star Fury conventions. Uh, may not have the same kind of cast list, but he always has brilliant guests, brilliant prices, cheap autographs. I'm amazed how he keeps the prices uh, so low, but he does. So don't worry if you can't get an autograph at this event. There will be other events, but this is a massive event. And because it was a massive event, it drew thousands of people i mentioned many times during the during the vlog uh, the event venue the excel center is i believe it's about a mile long and a lot of it happened in the second half of the uh, second section of the event um, for accessible entrance it was only accessible for people with disabilities from the west end and unfortunately everything happened at the opposite end so throughout the event it took a lot of effort uh, to get to where everything was happening the show floors the stages uh, the autographs the photo ops the live stage the, everything was happening at the opposite end to the accessible end and the entrances so it was always a tiring day uh, for me personally um it was also very tough to get about. Although people were as accommodating as he could, the fact that there were so many people in small areas where the, the, they were channeled through uh, small corridors and things like that made it very tough for people to get around. There was no real direction, uh, no real signage. If you had an app, 
uh, which was brilliant. There was Wi-Fi, but 400,000 people all using the Wi-Fi, it was slow, it wasn't brilliant. Uh, so unless you had a good map to work from, it was hard to find your way around. It was um, also tricky at times to find someone to ask directions. Uh, you had to rely on uh, the kindness of strangers, which uh, everyone was brilliant and helped. Uh, but yeah, people were banging into each other, tripping over each other. I had my walking stick kicked from under me multiple times. Obviously, it's all accident, you know, there's there's no malice uh, or anything like that, but it was tough to get about. Uh, physically got banged into, lots of people don't understand that when you're throwing a, a backpack onto, onto your back, you're potentially smacking someone in the face. Uh, one person actually made a very valid point, said as busy it was, how daunting do you think it was for little children who can't see very far or are high because they're surrounded by adults. So it was a bit daunting for a, a, a few children, lots of children crying, uh, but lots of children having a fantastic time uh, meeting some of these characters, saying hello to Wookiees and uh, Yoda met a few people and uh, Kids absolutely in their element because they've just met Mandalorian with a little baby Grogu in his pouch. It's absolutely brilliant. So there was lots of high points, a few uh, low points, but that's what happens at events like this. So just be prepared if you're planning on going to another celebration. I think the next one's actually going to be in Japan in 2025. If you're going, do your research, be prepared don't waste don't spend all your money if you can't afford it to, you know there will always be an, another event so just be wary um but yeah it was a good event we had a fantastic time hope you've enjoyed the vlog i uh, managed to get a couple people to actually um uh, subscribe to us so i'm really happy with that uh, if you haven't subscribed to us and you do like the event and uh, do like the vlog, then please give us a thumbs up. If you've got any questions, please drop me a line. Uh, my details will be in the, uh, the, uh, the information below. Uh, drop us an email, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Facebook. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Give us a thumbs up. Click all the notification bells, all the usual things. And until next time, bye-bye.